The year is 1291. The Knights Templar are defending Acre, the last great city held by the Crusaders on the coast of the Holy Land. But the Mamluk Sultan has arrived with a massive army. He will stop at nothing to conquer this city and expel the Crusaders forever. At first, the Templars agree to terms with the Sultan and prepare to surrender. But then, the Mamluks do something that so horrifies the Templars that they are no longer willing to negotiate and instead resolve to fight to the last man. After Richard the Lionheart's victory over Saladin during the Third Crusade, the Crusader states of Outremer, that is, the land beyond the sea, recovered dramatically. For much of the 13th century, Crusader Outremer was a prosperous and well-defended coastal kingdom based around Acre, the most important trade port in the region and the military center of the Knights Templar. However, in the later decades of the 13th century, a new Saracen power came to dominate Egypt and Syria, the Mamluks, descendants of a class of Turkish slave warriors who had overthrown Saladin's Ayyubid dynasty. Commanding vast resources, the Mamluks proved to be the most dangerous enemy ever faced by Crusader Outremer. By the 1280s, many of Outremer's cities and castles had fallen. In 1285, the great Hospitaller Castle Margab fell. By 1287, the Mamluks took Latakia, one of the last cities of the old Principality of Antioch. By 1289, the magnificent city of Tripoli, ruled by the Crusaders since 1109, was conquered by the Mamluk Sultan Kalawun. The nobles and military orders of Acre dispatched urgent requests for help to the west. Much help was promised, but little arrived. Kalawun died in November of 1290, but his son, the new Sultan, Al-Ashraf Khalil, announced his plans to fulfill his father's dream of conquering Acre. In April 1291, the Sultan arrived before Acre with the largest army ever assembled during the Crusader era. The Christians within the city knew well that this would be their last stand. The Templars, Hospitallers, and Teutonic Knights had brought reinforcements from all over Europe, and the Grand Master of each order was present to command the defense. Owing to the support of the French crown, Acre's fortifications were powerful and strong, but the Sultan had brought at least 100 siege engines. Day and night, Mamluk catapults pounded at the walls. For a month, the fortifications held firm, while the Templars and other defenders valiantly fought to keep the attackers off the walls. By May 8, Acre's external fortifications were so damaged that they had to be abandoned by the defenders. On May 18, Al-Ashraf ordered a general assault which overwhelmed the city. Many refugees escaped via ship, but many also perished under Mamluk swords. Meanwhile, the brothers of the military orders refused to surrender, fighting like lions up and down the city's streets, cutting down many of their opponents before they themselves fell in battle. By evening, only one part of Acre remained in Christian hands, the Templar Fortress by the sea. Amid the violence of the Mamluk assault, the city's last surviving refugees took shelter with the Templars. And so, the fortress was filled with women and children. Above all, the Templars were determined to save these innocent lives. At first, Al-Ashraf tried to capture the fortress by assault, but the Templars fought hard, and the Sultan ended up losing large numbers of his best warriors. Frustrated, Al-Ashraf opened negotiations with the Templars. The Sultan swore that he would permit the women and children to depart unmolested if the Templars would surrender. Under these terms, the Templars agreed to give up their fortress. But when the first Mamluk detachment arrived to take possession of the stronghold, they immediately began to accost the women and children and even argued with one another over who would have which as slaves. The Templars were furious. Immediately they drew their swords and fought fiercely against the offending Mamluks, slaying them all. The remaining Templars, about 30 brother knights, then sealed themselves up in their stronghold and refused to negotiate any longer with the Sultan. Now, they were committed to fighting to the last man. Still concerned to save the women and children in their care, the brothers managed to lower some of the refugees down onto boats in the harbor, which then escaped to Cyprus. 
Enraged, Al Ashraf ordered his men to destroy the Templar fortress. The Mamluks mined the walls, while the Templars stood firm, defending their position. When the Mamluks finally did breach the fortress, the Templars met them for the final battle. At this point, the mines collapsed, bringing the whole fortress down on top of the Brother Knights and onto the hundreds of Mamluk warriors who'd just broken in. Thus, these last 30 or so Templars went down fighting and took a number of the enemy with them. This was the end of Acre. Al Ashraf ordered that the entire city be razed to the ground to prevent the Crusaders from ever recapturing it. The Latin Christian presence in Palestine, which had begun with the First Crusade in the 1090s, had at last come to an end. Al Ashraf's reign didn't last much longer. He was killed in 1293 by assassins loyal to a rival Mamluk faction. The Templars and the heirs of the Kingdom of Jerusalem held out on the island of Cyprus, captured by Richard the Lionheart during the Third Crusade. Cyprus remained a Latin power center for centuries to come.